Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Shrewsbury Zoning Board of Appeals. A couple announcements. Um, an advisory from the Mass Department of Public Health has been issued for all non-vaccinated and fully vaccinated people to wear a mask in public indoor seating in areas of substantial or high transmission. Shrewsbury in Worcester County has been categorized as a high level of community transmission for over a month. Therefore, we require that all employees and visitors in all municipal buildings wear a face mask. Exemption, exemptions from the mask requirements include those with a medical or other eligible condition. In addition, we ask all those attending the meeting to practice social distancing, leaving space between yourself and other non-related parties also attending the meeting. The board members here tonight will also be masked and practicing social distancing through their seating arrangements. When speaking, we do ask that your face mask remain on. Thank you. First order of business is to sign a few bills that we have. Uh, can I get a motion to approve a bill to the Worcester Telegram and Gazette from September 27th, 2021 for legal notices in the amount of $238? Motion to approve. Second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Second, uh, Worcester Telegram and Gazette charge from May 24th, 2021 for legal notices um, in the amount of $700. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Can I get a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Third is to W.B. Mason for nameplates to the tune of nine, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, $9.92. Motion to approve. Thank you. Can I get a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And lastly, W.B. Mason for office supplies for $27.68. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Next item on our agenda is to review and approve minutes from the September 27th, 2021 hearing. Motion to approve minutes for September 21st, 2021. Can I get a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Next, can I get a um, motion to approve minutes from the October 14th, 2021 meeting? Motion to approve. All in favor? Or second? Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. There we go, Peter. All right, we're gonna open up our meeting, our first meeting of the evening, 6.30 meeting, to hear the appeal of Luciana Bognami, 251 Davis Street, Northboro, for a special permit to the town of Shrewsbury zoning bylaws under section 4B to expand the second story to increase living space on an existing non-conforming single family dwelling upon property located at 19 Worthington Ave in the resident B2 district. The subject premise is described on the Shrewsbury Assessor's Tax Plate 32, Plot 437000. I ask the appellant to, if the appellant is here, to please step forward, if you don't mind. Yep, you can sit right on down, and um, if you could just let us know, uh, introduce yourself by name, please, and let us know uh, what My you- My name is Luciano Bagnami. I'm a contractor for the homeowner, and Mr. Marcolino, and uh, we are looking to, we are requesting a special permit to be able to uh, increase uh, living space on the second floor of this house, located on 19 Worthington Avenue. The dimensions, the outside dimensions of the house will not change, we were just looking to raise the roof so the second floor will have a little bit more living space. Okay, great. Uh, let's chat with board members on thoughts, questions, comments. Lisa, you wanna start with you? Um, I am looking for the plot plan, Madam Chair. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I realize that it is not where it normally would be filed, so please mm -hmm. navigate to your emailed application folder within the Google Drive. Thank you. And the plot plan will be at the end of the application. So Thank my apologies you. for that. Okay. Thank you. And if you don't mind, I will just add that it is non-conforming due to side yard and rear yard setbacks. Great. Thank you. Uh, okay, <coughs> hold on one second. <laughs> Peter, do you, you want to go first? Um, sure. So I actually don't uh, really have anything, I think, where it's not changing the footprint at all. Um, I don't think I have an issue with it. Okay. Lisa. Yes. I just verified that, too. So none of the setbacks are changing. Um, your um, 
doing this addition within the existing footprint. That is correct. And you're only before us because it's an existing non-conforming structure. Yep, that and is correct. I have no issues. Yeah. Great. I am good with that also. Thank you, Mr. Fawn. Me too. Great. And I agree Me with it well. as well. So uh, thank you. Uh, Ms. McAllister, any further information we should take into consideration? Not. Okay. Um, Great. Thank you. Thank you. Public. Uh, this is a public hearing. So uh, is there anybody that wishes to be heard on this matter? Okay. No public feedback. Can I get a motion to close the public hearing, please? Motion to close. Can I get a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve a special permit to expand the second story to increase living space? Motion to approve special permit to section 4B to expand the second story to increase living, sp living space at 19 Worthington Ave in residence B2. Can I get a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Next order of business to hear the appeal of John Meter, 50 North Street, Shrewsbury, Mass, for a special permit to the Town of Shrewsbury Zoning Bylaws under Section 4B to construct a second story to increase living space on a non-conforming single-family dwelling upon property located at 120 Boylston Circle in the Resident A District. The subject premise is described on the Shrewsbury Assessor's Tax Plate 10, Plot 000013. Welcome. State your name for the record, please. Uh, John Meter uh, with Don Pegg, the owner, um, looking for the special permit for similar reasons as before. All we're doing with this property is increasing the pitch yes. of the roof to create more space and better living space on the second floor. Oh. We're not changing the footprint at all. Sounds familiar. Yeah, mm. just did it. Mm -hmm. And so, sorry. Peter? I didn't mean to jump right to the front. Okay. Um, so just raising the pitch of the roof, in other words, the front of the house won't even really look any different. Except it's actually going to be improved. We're going to add doghouse domers to the front. Okay. We do have some pictures if you, you want. guys want to see oh. them. Yeah, if you give them to us, we have to keep them. That's the only rule. No, uh, you can keep them. Okay, <laughs> wouldn't mind. That'd be great. <laughs> I made many copies. So. Okay, there you go. We like prepared paperwork. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The first page is the front existing, and page three would be the proposed front. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Very nice. Makes sense. Big improvement. Yes. Mm -hmm. Should have been there all along. Yeah. <laughs> Make it into a true cape. Yeah. Uh, Peter, any questions? Did I? Looks great. Lisa. No issues. Patrick. I like the pictures. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. And looks great. Great. Thank you. I agree. Um, Ms. McAllister. Nothing to add, Madam Chair. <coughs> okay. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard on this matter? Being that there is no one, I will ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close. Can I get a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, can I get a motion to approve a special permit to expand the second story to increase living space? Motion to approve special permit section 4B to construct a second story to increase living space at 120 Boylston Circle in the Residence A District. Can I get a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you want to put that in there? Sure. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. Next on our agenda, to hear the appeal of Alex DeVivo of 14 Appaloosa Drive, Shrewsbury, Mass., for a variance to the Town of Shrewsbury Zoning Bylaws under Section 7C to construct a pool 10 feet from the side yard setback on an existing non-conforming single-family dwelling upon property located at 14 Appaloosa Drive in the Rural B District. The subject premise is described on the Shrewsbury Assessor's Tax Plate 43, Plot 011026. Can you state your name for the record, please? Yes, hi, Alex DeVivo. Hello, Alex. What do you have in mind? <clears throat> so, um, basically, um, I'm asking for the 10-foot side yard setback because it's the only area on the property, um, just due to the topography, that I could actually install the pool. 
um, there's a, a very steep uh, hill that actually runs off uh, down to an area with boulders and then on the other side of, of the property it basically anywhere else on the on the property would put it right on top of the house and not meet the uh, 10 foot set back off the house so um, this is the only area I have some pictures that I can share I only have one set but I'd be happy to pass those around so you could see what I'm dealing with but basically asking for the relief for that reason is the set that you have with you um, something you're willing to no oh, yeah you guys I, mean, I only have one set but you're that's okay if you want to Bring it up here. We can take a look at it. So I took uh, four images of like the entire backyard. So kind of see. Great. <clears throat> Miss McAllister, while we're looking. Yeah. So um, I'll just reiterate first the the zoning of it is that a, an in-ground pool like this does have to meet the side yard setbacks in this district, uh, which is 30 feet. Um, the appellant is correct. It must also be 10 feet from the house. And, um, and then the topography, of course, would affect the placement of that pool. Um, this one, although it's a, a nice drawing, it is a not, it's, excuse me, it is not a certified plot plan. So you will have to vote to accept uh, or deny the waiver request that was in addition to this application. And um, when staff reviewed specifically the zoning enforcement officer. She flagged it as um, potentially um, needing or rec she recommends a condition be added to the decision to request an as-built plan once the pool has been completed. And so this is informed by a number of things she's seeing in the field, so to speak, um, and a number of different enforcement issues she's come across. So she is recommending that Again, as-built as plans be a condition of your decision um, to ensure that the pool is constructed uh, in the manner in which it is approved by the board, and it also helps uh, her for enforcement issues moving forward. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, I just have a question, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. So the only tricky part is if we don't have a certified um, plot plan that we're voting on, how will the as-built plan be used to compare as to whether what was built matches what we approved? So I, I would intend to write the decision if it passes that it can be no more than, or excuse me, no less than 10 feet. Yeah. So, and that, that's not terribly unusual, um, but it would be that the, it would, the as-built plan would be submitted uh, in the building permit before the final inspection is done uh, and the building inspector zoning enforcement officer would review it at that time okay okay if i may interject too i've spoken with um the um land surveyor who actually did all the uh, plot planning in the entire subdivision for my neighborhood mm -hmm. um so I, I i told him that i had a concern quite honestly having the pool installed and not knowing that if it met the setback requirements and then having a pool on the ground that you know didn't meet the requirements so what i intend to do is i intend to have them come out and stake it in the spring because this is likely to be an april project for me should it be approved so they're going to come out and stake it and do a surveying and then he's going to provide me with the as built um you know once it's complete okay any other questions uh for me I, well yeah if we're if we're going to switch to that um so I, I agree, knowing the sort of topography here, that you'd meet the requirements for um, a variance, you know, soil shape topography of the land, um, I think clearly puts a hardship here. Um, I think the only concern I have, especially if you're not planning on going ahead until April, is it seems we could avoid some of the issues by getting a certified plot plan ahead of time that identifies exactly where the pool is going to be and then have the as built so that the comparison can be direct. Um, I think if you were planning to break ground immediately, I'd say, well, fine, we can waive it. But um, with so much lead time, it seems like it wouldn't pose much of an issue to get a plan done ahead of time. And it might just save you some yeah, problems. Yeah, I was, I mean, I, quite honestly, I was trying to avoid the cost because it, it will be costly to have them come out and do that. Yeah, it's just that it's a requirement for everybody. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't sound like there's any particular reason other than that you'd like to avoid the cost why you couldn't do it, right? <laughs> yep. Um, so, I mean, everybody would like to avoid the cost. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it doesn't sound like you're imminently breaking ground. So um, that's just where I'm sort of thinking right now in terms of the plot plan issue. Mm-hmm. 
Lisa? Uh, yes, so I'd, I'd agree uh, the plot plan is needed, I think, for this decision. I differ, um, in my opinion, regarding the hardship. Um, I think I, I personally need a little bit more to consider the topography um, a hardship here. I see from the photos there's a slope. I don't know how much of a slope that is, but I know others construct pools on slopes yeah. um, with retaining walls and whatnot, and others even remove decks to have a pool within the setbacks. So I'd like to hear a little bit more about why that's a hardship. Yeah, so there w there's another issue that I actually wasn't made aware of until uh, I think last week when I had uh, kind of heard from um, the town regarding sort of what to expect. Um, there's vegetated wetlands that run through the back of my property. Mm -hmm. And I spoke with the conservation agent, uh, Brad Stone, today a little bit about sort of what to expect and what type of filing that I'd have to, to make with regards to that. And he had informed me as long um, as I stay outside 50 feet of the buffer zone um, that I would be fine. But if I was to go down that hill, I'm going to likely encroach on that, uh, I will be inside the 100 foot buffer zone, which is, mm -hmm. I guess, what the, the, the issue is. But he said, as long as I stay, you know, between 50 and 100 feet, I'd be okay. But it, I think the way that the, the pool is going to be on the plot plan, I'm going to be inside that 100 as it is, just going, you know, where it would be in the backyard. So I see in the plot plan, it's pretty close to that buffer um, in what you're proposing. What I'm suggesting, and which other homeowners have done, is they their pools are closer to the house. Mm -hmm. So they're just 10 feet away from the house, mm -hmm. for example. So can you talk about why I you mean, wouldn't be able to do that? I mean, basically where they're putting it, it there's not much room off of the 10 feet. 10 feet. It, is. it is 10 feet. It is 10 feet. The corner of the house. Like so I, I would say same uh, distance from the back of the house, but within the 30 yard set, the 30 foot setback. Yeah, I mean, I'm not seeing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the pool would go. Um, I get where's north. There's no. <laughs> there's north. Yes. Yeah, so if right the pool down. were moved north, north um, east. Yes. Let's say the, if the deck weren't there. If the deck wasn't there, um, I, I still think I'd be running into issues with being too close to the house. Or I mean, the pool would be have to be so small that. You know, mm -hmm. it would make the project not even, you know, worth, worth it. it to us. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Patrick? Um, I uh, will agree with uh, Peter on the uh, plot plan, but I also think, you know, <laughs> we don't get much swimming time around here, but if you really <laughs> want a pool, if the neighbors don't have a problem with it, I... I I don't, I don't see a problem with it. Okay, Anne. I share Miss Cassette's concerns. Okay. So I see it as I think the topography is definitely a hardship, and I see that that's, that that backyard goes way down. Yes. Um. Yeah. Um. I, I just don't see that there's a whole lot of other places to put it without really reconfiguring that backyard. So I, I, I do see a hardship um, myself. So um, all right. Well, it's a public hearing. So let's what's the photos again? Yep. I just add, I guess, so I think it sounds a bit like there might be something like uh, a majority on the plot plan issue. Um, Mm -hmm. So the applicant might consider continuing to the next meeting to get a plot plan, and you'd have another bite at the apple in terms of presenting your evidence as far as the, the variance and whether there's truly a hardship in terms of the topography. Um, mm -hmm. If it goes to a vote, you might not have the votes to get a variance from what it sounds like folks are saying. Yeah, I think having better visuals is going to really be helpful in this decision, especially since you're asking for a variance. Okay. So I would share Peter's opinion that perhaps considering a continuation of the hearing might be in your best interest. Okay. So 
So can I get a motion to well, you're maybe public? Uh, oh, yeah, public. I'm sorry. Public, public comment. Do we have uh, anyone wishes to be heard in the audience? Okay. Can I get a motion to close the the public hearing? Uh, uh, if if the appellant would like to continue, we could vote to continue the hearing if the appellant so chooses. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of waffling back and forth here. I mean, the, mm. the, the issue that I have is that I tried getting this on the September agenda because I mm. have to return the contract to the pool contractor to lock in the pricing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm concerned. Uh, I actually owe him the contract back by November 1st, but um, I also, you know, I guess don't want to be... I, I guess my question would be, so if it was voted no, well, what does that mean? Then I have to reapply and pay the fee again to come back or... And come back, oh. I believe. Oh, yeah, you said I know. Yeah. Um, so the process for it would be that you'd have to come back with a, a if you did come back, you'd have to come back with a substantially different plan um, that the board would then have to approve and vote that it is substantially different than the one they saw here. Okay. Um, it would be there'd be a handful of additional steps. You'd have to go to the planning board as well uh, for their review and approval just based on whether it was a substantial change or not and then the board could vote again on the on the plans but it is definitely a, a more difficult process if they do not deny okay we're i think trying to get you to a positive outcome here okay so i th i would echo peter's suggestion on a continuation but that's up to you okay yeah we can continue with them okay can i get a motion to continue please Motion to continue uh, the hearing for 14 Appaloosa Drive to construct a pool 10 feet from the side yard setback. Can I get a second? Uh, we need to, to oh, continue to it. Yep. So if you don't mind me, I just want to confirm. November 29th. Oh, the date oh, and yeah. the time. <laughs> yep. I'm thinking, what are you looking for? At 630, November 29th. Okay. Be the motion. <laughs> As stated. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. See you next month. Uh, we're going to have to yeah. figure that out. <coughs> okay. That, then. Um, you don't have to do anything. Nothing. Okay. Voice vote. Next 630 hearing is to hear the appeal of Colton Land LLC, 40 Southbridge Street, number 250, Worcester, Mass., for a special permit to the Town of Shrewsbury Zoning Bylaws under Section 4B and Section 7D to continue use for retail and or office with non-conforming parking requirements upon property located at 256 Boston Turnpike, Shrewsbury, Mass. In the limited business district, the subject premise is described on the Shrewsbury Assessor's Tax Plate 32, Plot 608000. May I ask the appellant to step forward and state your name for the record, please? I just state your name. Uh, uh, well, my name is uh, James Sofan. I'm the manager of Colton Land at LLC, the owner of the property at 256 uh, Boston Turnpike Road. We're here to, uh, to apply for a special permit uh, to allow us to use the, the property for both retail and business use, office use. Uh, the permit is for non-conforming parking requirements in the limited business zone. I would like to point out the property it has recently been used for retail space and uh, our immediate use for it is uh, office space. We're a small management company. It's myself and uh, my assistant here. Uh, we uh, <coughs> uh, like the board to again, uh, issued a permit for both uh, retail and uh, uh, business use so that uh, we don't have, if we do change use somewhere down the road, we don't have to come back here again. Presently, the, the site has three parking spaces, uh, which, which uh, is, not, is not conforming according to today's requirements. That's basically uh, 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 everything we have to say here. So uh, we'd like the board to uh, to uh, uh, allow us to uh, use it for uh, for office space. 
Okay. Ms. McAllister, background? Yeah, I, I would just clarify that the ask is to, that, that the use is by right, but the parking is what is non-conforming. So um, both retail and office use require about 10 spaces each. Uh, and as Mr. Sofan said, three is provided uh, in the existing plan that you see in your file. Um, and in accordance with Section 4B, any non-conforming uh, use, and in this case it would be parking, can only be changed to a similar or less restricted uh, use. So in the, in the purchase of this new property, it, it underwent zoning review, and that's why they're before you today. Okay. Mr. Mulcahy, you want to start? Sure. Um, so, you know, there's a, it'll, it'll be a third as many spaces as is required. Um, it sounds like in the immediate future that's not an issue if it's just your company, which is just a few people. Um, do you have any near-term plans as far as the retail, which I could conceive of requiring? I mean, it requires the same number of spaces, 10, but depending on what you'd be doing in a retail place, you might need more than three spaces. I guess my question is, um, how long are you planning on using it as an office? Do you have any plans to convert it to retail right away? No, no. We're going to use it for an office as long as we're in business. We okay. Um, okay. I'm not sure if it does. I don't know if it makes a difference, but it has the property next to it. Where If you look at the plans, it shows the, the other property. Uh, with the, uh, They have, like, extra parking. Is that 258? 258. Between 258 and 262. Yeah. You know, so eventually if he were to rent out a space to another type of, um, like, because our office won't take that whole space, if he converts another office or and rents that out, then their parking would be allowed, you know, probably leased into, um, built into the lease that they could park between those properties. Oh, so you also uh, own 258? Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Okay. Madam Chair. And 262. I would just add that we did, we did ask um, the appellant that each property, and, and I think they understand each property they own has to be taken individually with parking considerations. If right. they did want to uh, do a parking plan, they would have to meet uh, certain um, guidelines for lighting and, and egress and everything like that. So that's not being done. A, a full site okay, plan is so not. Okay, so that's further down the road. Yeah. So. Right now, we would just have to take uh, 256 by itself. By itself, yeah. on its own value. Okay. Vito? I guess uh, my inclination is if it was going to be used as office for now and just your office and just a few cars, that we would just approve that and leave retail for when there is a retail use. But um, I don't feel super strongly about that. So I'd like to hear what everyone else on the board thinks. Ms. Cosette? I'm in a position to approve, but I too would like to hear from other board members and public comment. Okay, Mr. Fullen. Um, where it says to continue use for uh, retail and office, so um, what is what has been going on there? Like, is it this? The flag the store thing? was there. Yeah. Yeah, there was a there was a retail space that they sold flags. Um, it was hard to miss coming up who night. AA flag, I think it was called. Yeah. All American flag. <coughs> so it was retail. It's now office, it's but could be, be both. <laughs> but you said you're just going to be office space. Mm -hmm. what, what's that? I'm sorry. We're just going to be office space, yeah. but we're we're not going to need that whole. It's just the two of us at property well, management. Well, well, we're not going to use it for office space, but we we have need for storage space. You know, yeah, so. so right now we're going to, only oh. part of that space will be, uh, well, probably three quarters of it, and then the rest will be storage for now. And eventually if it's, you know, if, when, if we get a building permit and stuff like that and we build out another office space, we would rent that out. So there could be a, another it's tenant and it more. could be retail or office. Right. Mm -hmm. Because of this use. Well, this is this was actually uh, suggest, suggested by both our architect, uh, but and the town planner to ask for uh, uh, a special permit that would cover both. So, like I like I so made it. We don't have to come back. We don't have to come back here right now. It's retail, 
uh, and it's non-conforming. So we could rent, the, uh, I'm assuming, we could continue as retail non-conforming, but we want an office. We don't want to have to keep coming back and forth. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why we're asking for the permit to cover both uses. And to clarify, you, you said it'd be primarily used for storage. Storage of what, if you mind my asking? I'm sorry, what is it? Storage, he asked about the storage. Oh, oh no, 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 she's saying level. we're not gonna use the whole space for our office. There's just two of us, it's 2,700 square feet. Yeah. The rest we just, <coughs> I mean, right now, we just plan to use for storage. If, if, if we decide to rent that out, that we could conceivably have another office next, you know, in, within that space, right. shared office. Yeah. I guess then you'd be running up against a difficulty with the three spaces, I suppose. Mm -hmm. There is a letter in Exhibit C from an uh, email from the architect describing the space and um, uses and the parking spaces that would be required. Definitely. The last statement he makes is this would likely be three or four spaces, so the parking requirements are very similar <coughs> to what is there today. Patrick, did you have more comments, questions? Well, the, the, the letter that um, Lisa was just referring to, I'm, I'm just trying to look at that now again. And yep. I'm going to let you look, Anne. Yes. Um, Mr. Safin, is this going to be your office, your company's office? Yes. Is that the intent? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. That's the only question I had. I am just curious about the other parcels. I mean, future plans, do you think at some point you'll merge them all? I'm just curious about that. Or for the time being, you're gonna keep what was is there and just use that as your office yes. with the okay. three parking spaces. Correct. So that's really Correct. what's in front of us right now. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay, great. Um, is a public hearing so and I ask if anyone would like to be heard on this matter okay can I get a motion to close a public hearing please motion to close thank you can I get a second seconded all in favor aye, aye. aye. so moved might I get a motion to approve the um, oh I'm sorry I'm reading off the wrong thing um, so I, can I get May I ask if there's any discussion that needs to be done? Anything anyone else wants to add? Um, or are you fine? I think it's I think it's probably fine. If it was, I mean, I know the flag store was there with just the three spots. It sounds like it's mostly going to be their own office, and so it might not need more than three spots. Um, you can imagine if they rent out a portion of the building to another tenant, the parking might become an issue, or if there's retail parking, might become an issue. But maybe we cross that bridge when we get to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel the same way. I agree. Okay. Uh, motion to approve special permit for section section four B and section seven D to continue use for retail and or office with non-conforming parking requirements. Do you need me to? I'm so yes. sorry to interrupt. Um, I am just realizing I should have said that there is also a waiver request. Okay. If before you make that motion, if you could look at that. Oh, I missed it. That is my mistake. So the, the yes, site plan, plan. Was per, that was provided with the parking plan is not, it's an architect, but not a certified land surveyor plan. My understanding that nothing's changing Nothing though about the changed. layout, right? Yeah. No. Okay, no. so. It's, yeah. Okay, so can I get okay, a motion? Okay, so let's first make, let's, I'll make a motion to approve the waiver request of a detailed plot plan plan, sorry, for 256 Boston Turnpike in the limited bus business district. I can't talk today. Can I get a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. And now I make a, a motion to approve the special permit, section 4B and section 7D to continue use for retail and or office with non-conforming parking requirements for 256 Boston Turnpike in the limited business district. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Let's get a waiver on that. Okay. Two sheets. Next hearing. 
This is to hear the appeal of <coughs> J.E.K.N. LLC, 60 Edro Island, Westminster, Mass., for four variances from the Town of Shrewsbury Zoning Bylaw under Section 7L to construct a common driveway over the maximum grade over the maximum length within 100 feet from the center line of an intersection and which exceeds the requirements for post-development runoff upon properties located at 171, 173, and 191 South Street, Shrewsbury, Mass., in the Resident A District. The subject premise are described on the Shrewsbury Assessor's Tax Plate 29, Plot 064001, Tax Plate 29, Plot 064009, and Tax Plate 29, Plot 064008, respectively. Can I ask you to state your name for the record? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the board, respectively, my name is Richard Ricker, and I'm here uh, representing the appellant um, who I expected here, but um, oh. for some reason isn't. But um, I would ask you to take me in that stead. Um, this is a request for um, various variances related to uh, the property down on South Street, um, which is depicted on this, this plan here. Um, I'm not sure, can everybody see this? I think you also have it in your, yeah. your files. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the proposal is to, is to avoid this, which is the present plan. And this shows you three driveways coming out onto South Street at, at the same location. That plan was um, at the engineering department. Um, this is an approved plan. It, it, uh, it will be built if they have to. Um, but uh, as you may see from your file, there's the, the engineering department asked us to um, make these requests. Um, it makes sense. Um, the topography of this site uh, goes from 114 feet down at the down at street level, above sea level, to 190 feet uh, at the uh, second house up here, um, right here, where where this is where the common drive ends because this is just a single driveway up to the up to the final house. So, basically, the request is to bring it down to one driveway joining here, the three houses up above, and then coming down in one driveway down to the location on South Street. I would um, also note, I think in your file is also uh, comments from the fire department that uh, they also are recommending this um, for various fire department reasons. Um, I spoke with Andy Truman today, who's our uh, town engineer, um, and he told me that I could feel free to say that he strongly recommends this um, this proposal. The fact is that um, this site has obvious topographical concerns. Um, you've got a 50 or 60 foot drop from top to bottom and a very short space. Um, the shape of the lots, which um, I don't know if the, the lots would be approvable today under our present zoning, but they were at the time that they were, that they were developed. So we have what we have. And, um, they, I think they would be approved, but it's still with the topography, it doesn't work. You, you combine the shape of the lots and, the, and uh, the topography of the hill coming down, and um, you clearly have the hardship. Um, when you put that much pavement of three driveways on a hillside like that, um, you have stormwater considerations um, coming down off the hill. You have impervious um, area considerations uh, that um, are a big concern in town right now. Um, uh, you have maintenance issues, um, which can be better addressed with a common driveway. Um, and um, you have confusion issues um, with three driveways at one particular spot um, with um, perhaps three little signs right at the end of each driveway, who knows. Um, I would suggest to you, uh, this is clearly incidental to this one lot. Uh, the, uh, to this one parcel of land. Uh, it, and uh, the request that's before you is not, I would suggest, a derogation of the bylaw because the uh, common drives are intended to, to solve a problem like this. And um, that's what our bylaw is for. 
I understand that it is longer than usual, but you have a lot configuration and a shape configuration that, that really dictates that. And um, I, I would suggest for all the above reasons, the traffic flow issues, the directional confusion issue that uh, undoubtedly would occur with three driveways opening up right, right at that location, uh, the uh, dressing stormwater uh, runoff, which now we are, we are asking uh, to withdraw that particular uh, variant, so um, we're actually down to three. We um, would withdraw the one on the stormwater 100-year um, uh, runoff request. Um, so um, I'm requesting that withdrawal. And if you need something in writing, I'll be happy to present it to Rowan tomorrow if, if you need it. Um, and, and obviously the, uh, the amount of pavement involved in this. I mean, you've got three times, almost three times the pavement. You've got three times the impervious area. Um, it's better all around, I would suggest to you respectfully, to have this common drive. And honestly, we wouldn't be before you asking for it unless the town engineering department asked us to. So with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you. Ms. McAllister? Um, I think uh, Attorney Richard did a, an excellent job in summing up the town's perspective. You'll see comment letters from both the fire department, or comments from the fire department and then a letter from engineering, uh, both uh, in support of this um, new plan. Uh, I would just add that, again, our, our zoning enforcement officer recommends that a condition be included uh, if uh, you approve this plan, uh, that a final as-built be submitted. This will be going before the planning board as well and re receiving. And as built are required under that process. Exactly. So we're, we're just asking that the zoning board also receive a copy of the as built uh, at the time right. that you submit to the planning board. So it's a, a very, hopefully very small uh, ask, but one that would make sure that the zoning board has the final uh, approved plan by the town in our files. And that's fine with us. Obviously, that's fine with us. I mean, we. If you were to approve this, then we would then apply to the planning board for their approval under the common drive um, bylaw. So, um, and that's w that's one of their main requirements that never waived is that they get a an as built. So, you get the same as built. Okay. Peter. Um, so, just a, a clarification question: um, by withdrawing that fourth request for variance, is that so? The thought then is that the development would comply. Um, with the excess? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so in that case, I mean, that was frankly my only concern. I, I know um, this area well, having grown up on Lamplighter Drive, and I know it's a very steep spot, um, and there simply is not space for three driveways, and if you were to have them, I think you'd have a, a waterfall, basically, and a serious rain event. Um, so I think this makes a lot of sense, um, and have, I have no issues with it. Oh, and I'll just say for the record, the hill is very steep, and I think it clearly complies with the um, terrain aspect of a variance hardship. So. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I I just I wish the developer were here. I just think it's ridiculous that three houses were built there on the, that slope. I know that has nothing to do with this variance, and you have to provide. Uh, access to those three houses that exist today and this is the safest option that you're presenting to us but I just I don't know how this development occurred in the first place I know at the time um, I think they were separate lots not a subdivision um, and it was allowed um, so I'm just venting <laughs> sorry <laughs> I understand I'm totally <laughs> venting but I it, this just gets I me I understand. Um, water under there, the bridge. there used to be a yeah uh, water under the bridge exactly um, so I again uh, you've presented how this would be the safer alternative and we've heard enough evidence from our fire department to support that but I just had to say how unpleasant it, <laughs> it's it's been the development over there but that's it for me just Thank had you. to make a comment yep. uh, Patrick I just hate to be the first guy up in the morning when it snows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's in charge of that? I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Work from home. <laughs> <laughs> Love your neighbors. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta. Anything else? That that's uh, I'm all set. Okay, Ann. 
I agree with Mr. Mulcahy and Ms. Cassette, but I have this question, Mr. Rickert. Sure. Are there easements that need to be obtained, or has that already been ironed out? It's already ironed out. Okay. It's, uh, right. they're, they're already in place. Okay, thank you. And, and the plan shows the accurate location. Okay, great. And I would say uh, this makes this makes such sense to just combine it all. To me, it's a safety consideration. Having curb cuts for three driveways would just not work well. Right. So, and I, I think we do have to take into consideration Chief Vona's comments and um, our town engineer, Andy Truman, are all in support of this. So I'm in support as well. Um, so given that this is a public hearing, I'd like to ask for any public commentary. If anyone out there would like to be heard on this matter, please, mm -hmm. um, if you could step over to the far right, um, right and right, identify yourself, please. Uh, name and address would be great. Sure. Um, greetings to you all. My name is Prop Jod Nall, and I live on 177 South Street, uh, which is a property right aligned with the driveway that is getting built. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are in favor of the proposed driveway right now. Uh, it is parallelly running against a steep uh, slope of my property and the downpour of the waterfall that you guys are talking about it is going to impact me if it's built in three different driveways and um, so therefore having a common driveway will provide enough space between my property and the driveway to create more safety uh, precautions for my, myself and one of the concerns that we do have is having some lighting fixtures around the driveway Be uh, especially at nighttime it's too dark to even look out my window in the backyard and another will be a great, have a great transparency on the developer's plan on providing some sort of barrier to the properties that are physically uh, parallel running along the driveway. Uh, right now, there is no uh, bare physical barriers right now, but in the longer term, how winters go around here, there could be some uh, vehicles running down the road when there's heavy snow or heavy rain. So these are some concerns that I wanted to address, and that is all. Thank you. That's very helpful. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to be heard, sir? Um, my name is Jyoti Silvaraj. I'm the one, you know, wake up in the morning in the winter. Could you give us your address, please? Sorry. That's okay. okay. Yeah, I'm the one wake up uh, in the morning in the winter when there's a heavy snow. <laughs> I'm not going to come down <laughs> because I live in one of the property in 191 South Street. You're 191. Yeah. Okay. So if I have to drive car during the winter or a... Uh, you know, black eyes, I have to land in their house probably. <laughs> so I, I really came here to um, requesting the approval of this common driveway. This actually takes care of everybody's problem. You know, not only myself, all the neighbors, I feel it's safe that, you know, especially I have had a very bad experience in the black eyes coming down the hill. <coughs> Whatever, like, you, even you put a ton of salt, it's not going to stop. Yeah. So this common driveway will have a uh, lot of safety than having three driveways uh, having in parallel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's very helpful. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Anyone else wish to be heard on this matter? Sir? Yep. Uh, hello, Madam Chair and uh, other members of the board. Um, I'm, on, I'm from the same property, 177 South Street, what you spoke on. The only thing um, um, I want to add, so we bought this property, I think, a year ago. As she raised most of the concerns that uh, we have, uh, the only thing I want to understand is the variance of the storm water uh, that we are trying to exclude because um, if because mostly that any water that comes downhill is going to come right onto our property. And if you see on this plan, um, this is our house. So right now this is all open space, and with current. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't know what they call for constructions to stop the water flow over there. Mm -hmm. They have some barriers here for just temporary. I'm sure once the construction is done, they will remove that. Mm -hmm. So my only concern is how, if there is any plan that developers can share, if the water is not directly going to run on my property, because then if any uh, mud water is going through the storm drainage, mm -hmm. are we going to be liable for that? Mm -hmm. So yep. can I show that? Mm -hmm. Attorney Ricker? Maybe I can show you. Sure, thank you. This is the drainage plan, um, which shows a detention basin here. And the intent is to, um, so that, that, is, that actually is the, the enlarged detention basin from the first plan. You can't really tell it on your yeah. small plan mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but it has been enlarged and, and, and there's been depth added to it in order to deal with the 100 year storm event. 
I would point out to you that if there were three driveways coming down, there is no provision in the bylaws that required mm -hmm. you to deal with the storm water that mm -hmm. comes down the driveway. So this mm -hmm. clearly exactly. is, is way better for the neighbors. Yeah. No, I'm all uh, again, I just to reiterate, I, I think I support the board to have a common driveway. I think that's just a common sense at this point, given that three driveways will definitely cause this problem. I just want to know if these plans can be shared with us, which makes uh, ourselves, all the neighbors, comfortable that we are not liable for the water. And again, we don't want to also be adding towards the storm mismanagement. You know, we all want to adhere to compliance, but if something is not in our hand, then we'll be really in a difficult situation once this is all built. Uh, but I do support having a common driveway. That that seems like a best option at this point. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank I'm going to give him my uh, sure. email address so that so that he can email me so that I can send them a copy of this plan. Perfect. Great. Okay. We'll get you over the plans. Oh, thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard in this matter? Um, Looks like we have one more. Yeah. Oh. I, I, nope. My name is Anthony Richard. Yusuf. I'm sorry. Anthony Yusuf. Nice. And I live at 183 South Street, just right behind, just same issue. So um, pretty much they brought up all the um, um, problems that we could have there, but we uh, definitely agree that there should be one driveway for those three houses. So um, I'm in support, and that's why I'm here. Thank you. Thank you that is much. helpful. Mm -hmm. Appreciate people showing up to let us know how they feel. Me too. Very helpful. That is very helpful. Different than last time I was here. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair. Yes, Lisa. Um, I, the only um, issue raised by abutters that isn't in the plan is that of lighting. Um, I would expect each homeowner to perhaps have a lamp post at the end of their driveway, but there is a long part of the common driveway that is right behind the abutter that mentioned the lighting yeah, that is not well lit is there anything you would like to say about that mr you Rickard? know i i don't know i don't I, I don't know what the plan is there um you know I mean, that's beyond purview i, I oh, think it's a planning i think yeah. though that um the planning board will address that okay. um because they they require lighting plants so um but i don't know what the plan is I okay. Really don't. I haven't seen any plan for that. And I don't think they've they've prepared to go to the planning board yet. So. Okay. Richard, how about the um, discussion on landscaping along behind um, 181? I believe. That's a fairly st steep slope, so it'll have to uh, be stabilized. But I, I think it's um, a, a grass stabilization type of type of landscaping. It's a it's a rocky hill too. Yeah. It's going to be hard to. Mm. No matter what you plant there, you're not going to be able to dig down far. I mean, without yeah. blasting. So. Well, the rock there will probably help to absorb. Well, a lot the rock as it does. Is. The rock helps somewhat, but again, you've got a lot of impervious surface here. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that the detention area is going to do some good, and and they they have to bring in fill in order to do the detention area, and I and I'm sure that. Uh, that will be governed by also the building department as well as the planning planning board when it comes to stabilization of the slopes. Okay. They are very particular about that. Yeah, for sure. All right, no further comments. Look for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close. Can I get a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay. Madam Chair, yes. may I say something? Um, you'll just have to vote to accept the withdrawal request that Attorney Ricker uh, verbally submitted to you <laughs> Okay. before voting well, on the, the let's motion. Let's start with that. Yeah. Can I get a motion to withdraw without prejudice? Um, Section 7L to exceed requirements for post-development runoff. runoff, correct? I make a motion as stated. Can I get a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. I'll repeat that one. Yeah, that was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we have three variances in front of us. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I make, we'll see how this goes. I make a motion to approve three variances, Section 5L, to construct a common driveway over the maximum grade 
over the maximum length within 100 feet from the center line of an intersection with condition that, and I've lost that page. Um, <clears throat> thank you. That after construction is completed and as built, sorry, after construction is completed and as built plan of the common driveway approved by the planning and engineering department shall be provided to the board for 171, 173, and 191 South Street in the Residence A District. Can I get a second? Uh, just to Whoop. amend the motion, Section 7L, not 5L. Oh, did I say 5? I'm so sorry. Section 7L. And then second. Got it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank nice you very much. Nice to see much. you all. I hope to see you soon without masks. <laughs> Amen. I don't know about that. One of these days. You never know. One of these years. One of these, right, exactly. All right. Continuing right along. We've got some new business to cover here. Um, first part of our new business is to review the zoning board meeting dates for 2022. Does someone have? All right. Do we not have that? Do we have the 2022 yeah. meeting dates? Can I bring to the men's room? Oh, in the Google? And um, legal? Well, we can, no. uh, we'd have to take a recess. We can do that. Yeah, we'd have to. Oh, yeah. Five minute recess. Oh, okay, five minute I'm, recess. I move to t make a five minute recess. Can I get second. a second? All in favor, aye. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> Oh, is this oh, the 29th? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. even looking so, at the wrong year. <laughs> go to 2022. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. And how about um, review and accept provisions of um, Mass General Law Chapter 110G regarding electronic signatures? Yeah, Madam Chair, I can give very brief background. This is just something that the planning department caught both at in the zoning board and the planning board, this is just something that we could not find in the minutes that the zoning board had done yet, so we are doing it now. And right. it is to allow the um, acceptance of votes via DocuSign mm -hmm. or electronic signature. So as you can see, the, the motion to review and, ex oh, 
actually, this is the wrong version. <laughs> I'm just we looking have at it. it. Here, here um, it is. I was going to read it, but take so, a look. Make oh. sure it's. I would like to amend it slightly from oh, okay. what you see, and I apologize. That's okay. What would you Again, like? Again, my. My Google Drive was down all day. Um, Can I go ahead and write right on here? Sure. So what the key piece of it is that we need to um, approve all electronic signatures from the beginning of, let me get the language right. We're going to kind of back date it, so to speak. Oh. So mm -hmm. um, at the end of it, so it should read, review and act to accept the provisions of MGL Chapter 10G regarding electronic signatures since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. So thank you for that. I'm sorry it, it was not included in the version you saw. Again, it's just to make sure that we uh, officially, officially recognize the votes taken by DocuSign. Okay. I was going to say we've been doing that. So, all right. I make a motion to... Uh, approve, right? Yep. <laughs> so it's review and act to accept. Okay, I make a motion to accept the up. provisions of MGL Chapter 110G regarding electronic si signatures since the beginning of the COVID pandemic. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Set on a roll call vote. Do we have to roll call it? Yes. On a if you don't mind roll calling. Yeah. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Mulcahy? Aye. Ms. Cosette? Aye. Mr. Fullen? Aye. Ms. Ruffalo? Aye. Ms. Lynch? Aye. So moved. All right. There you Thank go. you. Peter can sign. All right. And All right. Then our last point is to discuss Town Council's memo regarding special permits. Let's bring yes. that up. Yes. If you don't mind, I'll yes. take it away. Please. So, uh -huh. okay. So I'm noticing that this is, before we begin that, I do wonder. So this, this does say Thursday, October 25th, uh, so it should read Monday. Jeez. Would, as the clerk, would you be comfortable amending that? I am. One the clerical touch. error. All right. So to speak to, uh, attor thank you. To speak to Attorney Medos's memo. Um, I know we had been talking about this as a board for a while. I remember t discussing it when I came on, but, um, We've had many special permits in front of us where the addition or deck, whatever the, the structure might be that was proposed was within the setback envelope, but the building or structure itself was non-conforming due to a, a set, usually a dimensional setback in a different area of the, the structure. So um, I had asked Attorney Madaus, a town council, to review our practice of requiring a special permit uh, for those such cases. And he did get back to us with the memo that you see in your um, drive that I would encourage you all to read if you haven't. But um, the, the quick version that I believe I emailed to you, but I'll, I'll read now, is <coughs> going to change our interpretation of when a special permit is required slightly based on Steve Medaus's review. So um, when, when there is an addition of living space on a structure that is non-conforming, let's say due to its front yard setback, but the addition is in the rear and does conform dimensionally to all the setbacks required in the zoning district, a special permit will no longer be required. So we've seen lots of decks in the back like that. Yeah. We've seen lots of bathroom additions in the rear of the house where the front yard is non-conforming, for instance. Mm -hmm. So you will not be seeing those anymore. Um, the new development, though, that Stephen Medaus's review did uh, highlight was a new practice that we, uh, up until this point, had not been doing, but we'll begin now, which is that a lot, so a non-conforming lot, either via frontage or lot area, uh, is considered, again, non-conforming, and so increasing living space on a non-conforming lot does, um, by his interpretation, does increase the non-conformity of the structure. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we haven't always been consistent with that interpretation, but it is now that if, if the house conforms, so if, let's say, a single-family house wants to add an addition, the house itself is conforming, but the frontage is a little short, let's say 80 instead of 100 feet, they will require a special permit now. 
um, to increase living space. So any questions about that from the board? Briefly, we can pause. No, that all makes sense. We can also talk offline as well. But um, the only other piece to that is that it is only living space that is considered um, increasing the nonconformity on a nonconforming lot. So again, if the structure is conforming, you're adding a addition on a nonconforming lot, that would require a special permit. However, if you were adding a deck mm -hmm. on a nonconforming lot, that is not considered living space. Mm -hmm. So it would not be an expansion of the nonconformity, thus requiring a special permit. So mm -hmm. decks, garages, three season porches, sunrooms, you'll see them listed in the memo, are excluded from c being considered living spaces, which would then increase the nonconformity mm -hmm. of a lot. Got it. Again, all of those structures I just named, if they were sitting in or outside of the setback envelope, would still require a special permit, given the, if, mm -hmm. if that was already nonconforming, right. obviously. Um, that would still require a special permit if it was dimensionally nonconforming, but it would not increase living space, living space and nonconformity that way. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that, that's a very technical zoning mm -hmm. statement, <laughs> but um, I would ask you, I put together a cheat sheet this. for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's in your emails. Um, it just summarizes what I just said. You can take a second, digest it, and look at it as well as the memo. So. Okay. All right. All of this will likely be happening as we review, as the planning department, excuse me, the planning department reviews building permits and any other applications that come before us. So this will be up to us to start to interpret and review along with our zoning enforcement officer, but it will obviously impact the kind of special permits you all will see. So. You guys put a lot of thought into that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, if we can get a motion to close the meeting and motion to close. Uh, oh, no, nope. Peter wants to stay. No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I want to close the meeting. Can we remember to do a condition um, for an as built on the um, South Street? Yes. We did. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I caught that. Actually, another point of order, though, there, there was a, um, I thought a, oh, what the heck, on one of these. A condition? Not a condition, um, and it wasn't a withdrawal. We continued. It was a waiver continued. of the plot plan. Did we have to? Do no, because we, we continued it. We continued that hearing. There was one that we we do not sign waivers. Waiver. Okay, great. Yes, I know. Yeah, that's it. That's just our custom. So the pools continued. He just needs a plot plan. Yeah, correct. Yep. Okay, can I get a second on the closing? Closing. The yeah. Uh, second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 So move. See you next month. Yes. <laughs> Woohoo!